All right, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the real biggest carnivore the world has ever seen. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to phase two of our spin wheel park. Last we left off, we added 10 species. We only have 10 species in here so far. I do plan to add more. And you know what? To save space, I am going to make the concavenator enclosure just a bit smaller. The concavenators can at least have some forest. There we go. So we got a concavenator eating the meat. All right. Anyway, we made that enclosure a bit smaller. So uh, without further ado, let's... Um, Move on to creature number 11. All right, here we are with the wheel. Our first creature of the episode is... Deinonychus, all right. So we'll start off with that. So for Deinonychus, I'm thinking about throwing them... So that's where the Gigantoraptors are. That's where the Australovenator are. Actually, I might make the Australovenator enclosure a little bit smaller as well. There we go. And then just maybe... Actually, you know what? We could use this for the Deinonychus enclosure. We'll make this a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger just so we can have enough room for them to roam around and do whatever they want. That should be good. So let's get the water going. Maybe have like a, a little lake, a patch of water here. We got the forest we need. Maybe put one of these over here. Expand that a bit. And then maybe put a viewing dome like over here. Yeah, that could work. Attractions. But we need room for the... We could put that in the back. Alright, viewing dome. Attractions. We could put that here. Alright, that should be good. Alright, let's... Uh, where's the hatchery? There it is. Alright, so let's go ahead and take that off. And put that... Over here, I guess. May have to, because... Uh, that's the only place I could put it. Damn. Alright, Dononicus, let's go. So, these guys are automatically eliminated from the wheel for Phase 3. So, we'll have to see what our final 22 creatures are. Sorry if I'm a little bit sluggish today. It's just, um... I actually went whale watching by the time I'm recording this. By the time I'm uploading this, it's, uh... It's Labor Day, so happy Labor Day to you guys. To anyone who celebrates Labor Day. Because when it's being uploaded, it's Labor Day. But when I'm recording this, it's Friday, and I just went whale watching. So, yeah, for the second year in a row, it's it's pretty awesome. I actually got to see a lot of whales. There were like ten humpback whales in one area, which is so cool. Alright, let's release Dononicus. So, so far, we don't have any large carnivores apart from Gigantoraptor, but Gigantoraptor is more of an omnivore than anything. All right, that's Deinonychus done. Let's move on to dinosaur number two. Dinosaur number two, what will it be? Or creature number two. Dreadnoughtus, okay. You know what? We could just throw them in with the Gallimimus. That's all. We could throw them in with the Gallimimus. That'll be way more convenient. We gotta make sure we have what they like, though. Let's get rid of this path. That can go away for now. Let me just decorate this area with forest. We have one tree here. Let's give them a, a bit of forest. There we go. That way there, they have their forest and their privacy. All right, Dreadnoughtus. All right, that one's an evolution one. That one's evolution and that one. Okay, no. One of them's, okay, that's Evolution, Dominion, and Dominion. So we got two Dominion ones and one Evolution one. Three Dreadnoughtus should be all we need. Or right, what, what do Dreadnoughtus want when it comes to food? Tall fruit and tall fiber. All right, that shouldn't be an issue. All right, let's give them what they want. All right, there we go, that should be good. Now Dreadnoughtus will probably take... A, yeah, a little bit longer. 
So while we wait for Dreadnoughtus to hatch, let's move on to creature number three. All right, creature number three is Microceratus. Okay, so now we can do one of two things. We can either put them in here or we could put them in here. I think we should just put them in here. We have to wait for the Dreadnoughtus anyway. So I guess we'll just, uh, I mean, we could just throw them in here, but you know what? Bigger herbivores will go in here. Smaller herbivores will go in here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. All right, let's release the Dreadnoughtus. Let's release them first. Alright, so while we wait for the Dreadnoughtus to release, what we might as well do is just build a temporary hatchery just until they're done. And then I'll delete it afterwards. Let's go to Biosyn, keep it Biosyn, kind of. And we'll just throw the Microceratus in here. Alright, these guys shouldn't be too fussy. Accelerated growth, there we go. Microceratus, we'll throw that in here. There we go. We'll just throw them in here so we could be productive. More productive. Alright, we still got one more Dreadnoughtus being released. And we'll be good to go. So I think the these guys are ready. Let's just throw them in. Those will be done within a matter of seconds. Alright, the third Dreadnoughtus is being released. Alright, let's release the Microceratus. Ooh, that's a nice one. You know what I might name you? I got the perfect name for this one. Right here. Eclipse. And what's your thing? Yukon River... Alright, that's good to know. I'll take a screenshot of that so I know. Alright. So that's creature number three done. Let me remove this hatchery. There we go. Let's move on to creature number four. Creature number four is... Staracosaurus. Okay. What we could do is just throw them in here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Staracosaurus can go in here. And then we'll put maybe like another smaller Ceratopsian, like in the smaller enclosure. Like if we get, say... I mean, other than Chasmosaurus, I don't think we have any other smaller Ceratopsians. I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I know we got Pentaceratops, which is much larger. Should we throw them in the smaller enclosure? You know what? Screw it. Since they're smaller herbivores, we'll throw them in the smaller one. Alright, that's too close. That's obstructed. Gotta put them in a spot where it's not obstructed. There we go. All right, let's just let's just throw them in the smaller enclosure. That's what we'll do. All right, Staracosaurus. Let's begin that. I figured since they're smaller, it'll only make sense to throw them in here. All right, they'll be done within a matter of seconds. Yeah, this will be an area for like smaller herbivores. We got Minmi. We've got Nigerosaurus. We've got. Dryosaurus, and we've got Microceratus, and we're about to have Staracosaurus. Uh. Uh. Alright, we should be good to go. We should be good to go. These guys will like the... Yeah, Ankylosaurids. Yep. So they'll like the Minmi. Alright. That's creature number four done. Let's move on to creature number five. Creature number five. What will it be? Metricanthosaurus. Okay. So we'll throw that in a separate enclosure. So maybe Metricanthosaurus can, like, go in here or something. And then we'll throw in, like, I don't know, three of them? I don't want to put in, like, all five. Because that would be kind of, you know, too much. We'll put in three of them. Alright, so let's make sure they have enough forest. 
probably, this is probably the biggest carnivore we have to date until we get something like Giganotosaurus or Carcharodontosaurus. But right now, it's the biggest carnivore we have. So let's make sure we give them a proper enclosure. We'll put like a feeder over here, like some goat feeders over here. All right, and then I'll just throw in a, one of these things. We'll throw in a research thing just to make it different. All right, I think that's that done. Let's take the hatchery out. I'll pick those three. All right, while we wait for the Metricanthosaurus, let's move on to creature number six. Creature number six is... Okay, I spoke too soon. Spinosaurus is now the biggest carnivore we have. All right, so for Spinosaurus, we need something big. Let's release Metricanthosaurus. <sighs> Alright, that's Metricanthosaurus done. Let's, um, we'll worry about the hatchery later. Right now, let's see if we can get the Spinosaurus enclosure done. So, Spinosaurus, where should we put you? Spinosaurus. You know, we'll put Spinosaurus, like, over here. Yeah, that, that should be good. I, I like that. I really like that. Alright, let's get the hatchery out of the Metricanthosaurus enclosure. And then move that over to the Spinosaurus enclosure. Now this is the biggest carnivore we have. Alright, Spinosaurus. We'll throw that in here. We'll just get the one. We'll just get the one. Because I kind of want this guy to be, you know. Alright, while we wait for the Spinosaurus to hatch, let's move on to creature number seven. Alright, creature number seven. What will it be? Indoraptor. Okay, interesting, interesting. So where should we put Indoraptor? Let's, uh, maybe give it an enclosure that's like a bunch of forest. Let's see, um, where should we put it? Maybe we'll put Indoraptor in here. Yeah, that could work, that could work. There we go. Alright, I think that should be good. Let's just add some vegetation to kind of cover it up a bit. Actually, you know what? You know what we could do? We can make this all rock. Let's make it all rock. Screw it. Make it a rock enclosure. Don't worry, I'll get to the Spinosaurus in a minute. I just need to... There we go. That should be good. We made the Indoraptor enclosure entirely out of rock. Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you... The real biggest carnivore the world has ever seen. We got Spinosaurus, let's go. The largest terrestrial carnivore to ever exist. Even though technically it's a Piscivore. This has got to be our star attraction, the Spinosaurus. Alright, let's uh, move this hatchery out of the way. So we can make room for the Indoraptor. You know, let's put two Indoraptors in here. We'll put two of them in. I know, am I mental? <laughs> I guess I am. All right, we'll put two in. Let's randomize the gene. All right. Watch we get the Indominus Rex next. Now, Indoraptor will probably take a little bit longer as well. So I figured we'd get two of them. And we go from there. We got this. And we've got... Ooh. These are some strong Indoraptors. <laughs> All right, while we wait for the Indoraptors to hatch up, let's move on to creature number eight. Creature number eight, what will it be? Stegoceratops, okay. What we could do with Stegoceratops, we could easily throw them in here. That's what we could do. Yeah, we have the Dreadnoughtus here, which are good. And the Gallimimus. We'll add in more variety by adding in the Stegoceratops, but first, we need to focus on the Indoraptors. All right, Indoraptor, let's go. I know what to call this episode, Age of the Hybrids. 
All right, that's Indoraptor number one. Let's release Indoraptor number two. All right. Now that's the Indoraptors released. Let's see if we can release some Stegoceratops. If we could find a place that isn't obstructed. Yeah, yeah, accommodation level low. Whatever. I'll deal with that later. All right, Stegoceratops. There we go. I think Stegoceratops will be one of the quicker ones, I do believe. Yeah, it'll be one of the quicker ones. All right. We'll just wait for them. Hold on. What do they what do they like to eat? What do they like to eat? Hold on. Ground fruit and ground fiber. I do believe we have both. All right, but just in case, I'll add some more ground fruit and ground fiber. We'll add some of that here and then the fruit. We'll put some of that in here. There we go. All right, that should be good. All right, Stegocerat... No, not, not by aircraft. Stegoceratops, let's go. Now these guys can get on with either Triceratops or Stegosaurus. They can get on with either. I do believe. Alright, they can get on with Stegosaurus and any Ceratopsian. They can get on with, yeah, pretty much everything here. Alright, that's creature number eight. Let's move on to creature number nine. Creature number nine, what will it be? Speaking of which, here's Triceratops. Alright, so for Triceratops, I'll just throw them in here. Alright, let's get Triceratops going. Alright, Triceratops should be another relatively quick one. Let's release all six of them. Yeah, they should be relatively quick. And then we'll move on to the final creature of the episode. And then off camera, I'll work on the accommodations. I should probably get a monorail going at some point. Yeah, whatever. I don't care about the guests. All I care about are the dinosaurs. All right, let's release Triceratops. Let's move on to creature number 10. And the final creature of the episode is... Elasmosaurus. Alright, we got another aquatic. Our second aquatic. Alright, so we should throw the aquatic probably in here, I would imagine. Yeah, let's, let's throw that in here. So let's get an enclosure big enough for Elasmosaurus to fit. Alright, that's a 30 seconds for the Elasmosaurus. We've already got an enclosure filled with dinosaurs, mainly Ceratopsians, but whatever. And we got a hybrid in there as well. All right, we should be good to go. All right, let's release our final creature of the episode, the Elasmosaurus. All right, so that's all of the creatures basically released and we've got quite a bunch of them actually we're kind of filling this up nicely we got two indoraptors three metricanthosauruses even a spinosaurus which is by the way the biggest thing on here or the biggest carnivore even dreadnoughtus is the biggest creature here but yeah i will work on the accommodations off camera and with that, that's going to have to wrap it up for this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. But until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.